In the last video I talked about pseudo classes which are used to style an element under various states such as hover, active, focus or visited. In this video I'm going to talk about pseudo elements. Pseudo elements are used to style specified parts of an element. They can be used to target the first letter or the first line or they can be used to insert content before or after an element. So let's get started. I'm going to create a p tag with some lorem ipsum in it. So that's p lorem. I'm going to go to the style sheet, the body. I'm going to give it a height of 100 vh, so it takes up all of the vertical height. And in display, I'm going to set to flex. And then I'm going to justify content to center, to center it horizontally. And then align items to center it vertically as well. Next I'm going to create, select the P paragraph tag by typing P and then two colons rather than the one colon that we had for the pseudo classes in the last video. This is a pseudo element and requires two colons. And then I'm going to do first letter and then font size 9rem and color blue. And there's our large first letter. If we change it to first line we get that. I'm going to limit the width of the p tag to 80% and margin 0 auto to center it. So we get that, that looks better. Right, I'll, I'm going to comment this out for now. And I'm going to reduce this a bit, get smaller. And then the before and after pseudo elements allow you to create content before and after the element. But the before and after content still remains between the opening and closing tags. P double colon before. Pseudo elements like before and after should be preceded by a double colon. But if you use a single colon, they still work. And then you have content, but I'm going to set this to nothing. Background is blue. Display is block because I want it to take the width of the text. And nothing shows at the moment until I give it some height. Twenty px, like so. So if I expand this to full screen, we look at the p tag. You can see the before is there and this is the text and you can notice that it comes in between the two p tags the opening tag and the closing tag and the after which we're doing in a minute will come after the, the the text so i 
go back to the this and then if I copy this shouldn't be a capital P should be a lowercase p make this after and now we got a line down the bottom as well if I look at the P tag we got before then the text and then after but everything remains within the opening and closing P tag I'll reduce this again It's important for you to know that before and after will not work on images. Images are replaced elements and before and after doesn't work on replaced elements. Next I'm going to create, I'm going to comment this out. And I'm going to create a block quote. Or M um, ten tab, get that. And in styles, gonna make the font size five REM. So we have big text. And then I'm going to do block quote, quote, before, and then content. I'm going to put something in this time. It's going to be open quote. color blue and also copy this down make this after and this is is close quote. So now we got opening and closing quotes. Right, I resize this back to small. And then I'm going to make this an anchor tag. And then I'm going to put this text inside here. And I'm going to create a title. I'm going to create a tooltip. Title equals this is a tooltip. And then if I mouse over that, you can see this is a tool tip. It just comes down there. I'll go to styles.css. Still have the before and after on the block quote, but that doesn't stop us creating a before and after on the A tag. For this example, I only need to create an after on the anchor title attribute. So go A and then in square brackets title to select the title attribute 
then double colon after so we've got the after and then content so the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to make this this is a tool tip so now this will be this is a tool tip and it's there all the time but uh, we'll deal with that in a minute I'm going to take this hot, big font size pop that out take it down to the default Next, I'm going to do display block and then background color is hash 333. Let's give it a dark gray background and padding. 1 EM and 3 EM and color is white so we have a tool tip but it's in the wrong position and it's on all the time which isn't what we want so we'll deal with that next I'm going to do a position absolute so I can position it where I want. Position absolute takes it out the normal flow of the document so we can position it where we want. By default it positions itself to the parent which in this case is the anchor tag. But I want to position it relative to the title attribute in the anchor tag. Therefore I'm going to put position relative on the title attribute like so. A title and then position relative. So next I'm going to position it at bottom naught and left also naught. So now it's like like this and it's wrapping. Well, I can stop the wrapping by going white space no wrap. And that'll stop it wrapping on the spaces. So we get that. And now it's on all the time, so I need to hide it. So if I go, I'm going to create a transition for it. So transform scale naught. And now it's disappeared. And then for the transition, I'm going to do transform ease out 200 milliseconds. The transform property applies some sort of transformation to an element. In this case it scales it so small scale naught so that it disappears. The transition is used to transition the tooltip so it scales up which I wanted to do when I hover over it. So the properties of the transition are transform this refers to this the transform scale and then ease out 
is the shape of the gradient that the transition occurs and 200 milliseconds is the time it takes for the transition to occur. So next I'm going to create a title colon hover and then I'm going to create an after on this title hover and transform scale and it's one so this will be a hundred percent so it'll be should show so now if I hover over that it scales up and it scales up over a period of 200 milliseconds but it appears over the text whereas I want it to go above the text so I'm going to put this to a hundred percent and now it goes like that that's better next I'm going to look at using CSS counters with before and after I'm going to go to index.html and I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to paste some HTML that I already have right I'll comment out the the before and after on the p tag and the block quote so what I have is I have a, a div with a class counters and inside the counters div there's five sections each have a, a p tag with some lorem ipsum in them and they're just they're all the same then down here you just have an an ordered list with five list items I'm going to style.css and then I'm going to create counters that's a class on the div and then I'm going to give the background light grey text align left and padding is 5 em and 8 em and margin top is 7 em Now I'm going to set, I'm going to create a counter, use counter reset, and I'll call it, you have to give it a name, I'm going to call it my counter, you can call it anything you want, then counters. section so this is a section within the div I'm going to make it position relative relative and margin to em so that's got them separated out now a bit I want each what I want to do is have each of these numbered one two three two three four five I'm going to do 
dot counters section bef before then counter increment this makes the count increment on on each section so and then you have to put in what the what the counter is which in this case is my counter and then content I'm going to have counter my counter and then there's going to be a space there so if I save that and so we've got the, the counters now but they're not positioned where I want them to go so I'm going to do position absolute this will take it out the normal flow so we can position it where we want to and I've got my position relative here so the section inside the counters is where we will position in our counter relative to so I'm going to make the background brown and the color white and now I need to give it a bit of width and width to em and height to em width to em should be it so it gives us a square and now I want to center the number so I do display flex and then justify content center this will center in the horizontal direction and now align items at center and this will center it in the vertical direction as well so we've got them centered but I need it to go oh these numbers to go over to the left a bit so I'm going to do left minus 2.5 em at that and I want them to go up a little bit so I'm going to do top minus 0.5 em get that so as the number is, is more or less in line with the text top row of the text we can use a counter on an ordered list I have an ordered list here so and do dot counters ol to get inside the ordered list and then I'm going to set a counter counter reset and I'm going to call it ol counters and then for each of the list items, <coughs> I'm going to count a greater li before, and we're going to do the counter increment to increment the counter, and it'll be the ol counter. counter now we do content 
and counter o l counter save that and now we've got both the original numbers and the numbers we created so I can get rid of the original numbers by going lists style none so now we have a new set of numbers but it looks terrible at the moment I can get it a bit better if I put a space so now we have a space between the number and the text and what I think I'll also do is make the text the, the numbers brown so it's brown so now they're brown so they're more distinct you have the space and you could make it more fancy than that you could do similar things to this by using the counter rather than the default that comes with the ordered list you can customize the numbers the way you want them. I think that's enough for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please subscribe for more.